It's been a busy start already here at the big house, Fort Worth Station 2. Ran an elevator rescue and a medical call and just getting back to get the day started. The sound on channel 4, unconscious person, 1401 West 7th Street, 1401. The security officer at the, uh, the 7-Eleven uh, was the one that called and said that he tried to, to wake up a guy laying on the sidewalk uh, right outside the store and he didn't answer so he called us so when I got over there you know just kind of tap him see if he's awake or you know actually unconscious or just sleeping which we get a lot of them uh, in that area and you know, a couple of other spots in our territory where it is that it's just some homeless people just sleeping on the sidewalk and so basically it becomes a conversation of hey man do you need any medical attention do you like do you need anything if not you, you have to move somewhere else you can't just sleep on the sidewalk one people are going to be worried and keep calling us and then two when it's something like it's outside of a property uh you know like 7-eleven or something like that you know you, PD will start to get involved as well because you're on private property at that point. So it's basically just the conversation of, okay, glad you're okay, you gotta get up and go somewhere. You can't, you can't just lay back down and go back to sleep here. You can't sleep here. So squad got called out, run with one of our engine companies down south. Uh, they had a grease trap from a restaurant overflow, get into the roadway. Uh, first company on did a good job of blocking it from the storm drains, keep it uh, from being a bigger environmental issue. Uh, they did the work they could with the absorbent they had. They called us out um, to mitigate any additional hazards and also to make the roadway safe. So we just put some absorbent down, uh, grind it in and brush it out. So hopefully no vehicle accidents occur and uh, environmental is on the scene, so they'll take care of the rest. All right, YouTube, I'm here with Jano. He is wheeling squad two today, which is a beast. Right. I've been enjoying the view from the back seat. Phenomenal job. Yeah, thank you. Um, and you're the resident expert here on this shift, right? You've been at station two the longest, it sounds uh, like? I have, yeah, on this shift especially, um, I guess I've been here about going on 19 years. Wow, okay. Uh, with the department, 22 or so. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've been here the whole time. Uh, here in Fort Worth, we do a vacation and leaf setup where we bounce around and take enough seniority on the job to bid on a spot, and then I end up coming here soon as I could. Nice, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one of the reasons I picked the big house was because of its large stature oh, yeah. that it takes yeah, up yeah. on this block and the very unique building construction. So I'm excited to learn a little bit more about yeah, it. Yeah, so we, we are the biggest fire station in Fort Worth in, in two ways. Uh, one way is pure square footage of the building. As you can see, it is a large building. When we get to the side, you'll see even better. It is a large building. Yeah. Uh, two floors plus two basement levels. Okay. Uh, and also, we have the, the most amount of people here with staffed rigs. Uh, so here in Fort Worth, we run four on everything. Okay. Uh, with very few exceptions to that. Uh, so we have the engine has four on it. The ladder truck has four, and we have our squad that has four. Okay. And our squad here is a combination of hazmat, TRT, rescue. Um, so we go to fires, rescues, and hazmats. Uh, for the most part, we stay out of the EMS system, and the engine will handle most of that. And we also have our battalion chief here. 
Uh, currently here in Fort Worth, we have seven battalions. Uh, we're formulating the eighth one as we speak, and it's about to come online here within the next couple months. Nice. Uh, but for right now, we have the seven, the seven battalions, and uh, yeah, Battalion 2 is housed out of downtown here. So as far as people and square footage, we, we have a pretty big piece of real estate here. Uh, Opened around 1930. Uh, it is the second oldest working fire station in the city of Fort Worth. A lot of the small portions of the station especially the corners where a lot of work is put into it. Uh, and you also see our neighbor building over there has some of the same architecture put into it that was put into this one. Uh, today, that houses our bomb and arson division. Uh, Fort Worth Fire Department is slightly unique in the way that we house the bomb squad. Uh, it's not on the PD side, it falls to the fire side for the bomb squad. Nice. Uh, so we have the bomb dogs that live here, we have the arson dogs that live here, Arston investigators live here, and the regional bomb squad also lives here as well. That tower right there is duplicated at the Will Rogers Center you may have heard, may have heard of. Uh, our Will Rogers area is a city-owned event center. We do our annual stock show, a lot of it happens over there. But that tower is the kind of the junior to the one over there, same architect, and he kind of built this to see how it all played out, then we also built it again over there. Okay. Uh, and that's the bell that they rang to let the volunteers know that there was a fire somewhere. They'd hear the bell ring and then they would come downtown. Much like volunteer firemen have pagers or apps on their phone now, uh, they had the bell at that time. And that is the original bell. That, so as you see, our bell here is from 1883. It's dated here and that's a, that's a true date. Uh, you can also see there's a lot of nicks and dings on the side of these bells, because uh, the tradition is, when you have a new brand new rookie come to the fire station at 10 o'clock every night he has to come out here with a sledgehammer and he has to ring the bell to let everyone know it's 10 o'clock <laughs> but the real joke is the captain's office is right there and he wakes up the captain and he the captain comes out of his office and uh goes in and lets a rookie know that he would not appreciate that at 10 o'clock <laughs> at night so that's Good. why that's like that i like that tradition So this here is our lobby. Um, everything in this lobby is pretty much original. Uh, the floors are original. The woodwork is all original from the 1930. Um, the only thing is it's been facelifted with a new front door and some paint and some pictures. Uh, but other than that, this is all of the original setup. And you can notice as we walk up the stairs, you'll be able to see where the actual tiles are worn from the years and years of walking up and down these stairs. So it's, it's pretty interesting to see that. This entryway is incredible. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. And also, we have the panther up here. This is original also. And there's a story behind the panther, and that's, there was a time when Fort Worth was pretty sleepy. And that, that was really no secret. Um, it was a small town, there was a railroad town, there was a cattle town. Uh, but other than that, there was a time when not a whole lot went on in Fort Worth. And our neighbors, Dallas, who was, their city is not very far away from ours. There was always that rivalry between neighboring cities. And the Dallas Morning News newspaper wrote an article about how it was so sleepy a panther could walk through downtown and fall asleep on the streets. That's how sleepy this place was. And at the time, we, we, we owned it. We, we took it and owned it. And uh, you'll see a panther here. You'll see Panther City Fire Department oftentimes referred to as Fort Worth Fire Department. A lot of shirts and hats out there right now have Panther City Fire Department on it. Uh, also, if you walk around downtown, you'll see some panther sculptures. Okay. You know, kind of, and that's where that all came from. Wow. Also, to this day, on the PD badge, Police Department badge of Fort Worth, there's a panther on top of their badge, and that's all where that came from. Wow. So, as far as Dallas Fourth rivalry goes, they call us the Sleepy Panther Town. And that's, you know what? We'll take that if we're not <laughs> Dallas. So, we'll, we'll accept that. Yeah. As you can see in here, very traditional fire station. Uh, we have three brass poles, slide, slide poles. We still use them today. Uh, one for the engine, one for the truck, one for the squad, or depending on which side of the rig you're riding on that day, um, that's the one you're gonna, you're gonna slide down. Uh, and all of these go up and upstairs into the dorm area. Uh, traditional watch room here, we keep someone in there just because of any walkers downtown that might need assistance. They can come here in a watch room. Uh, attendant will be able to see them and give them a hand. And there's a sleeping area in there. There is, yeah. That was for the watch. Our watch room is maintained 24-7. Okay. Yep. Always have someone in there.
this is all pretty standard, the gear lockers, uh, not, nothing fancy going on here. So this room here is just set aside for our in-house conference training. Uh, any sort of training we do, of course, we can always just do it at the kitchen table like your traditional fire station does. Uh, because of the amount of training we do associated with the special operations of this station, uh, it's nice to have a conference room with a projector screen to where we can really dive in and get some focused training with all the distractions of being in the recliners upstairs or on the kitchen table or something. Uh, so we can come down here and, and most of what we see here is hazmat training material that we use. Um, a lot of expired stuff um, that we use on the training level um, is, is over here and then just book references. Um, but other than that, all of our training and hazmat storage is kept downstairs in the basement we'll get to in a minute. Okay. Out here is our workout area. Nothing fancy here. Um, regardless of the weather, we work out outside in our, in our bay here. Uh, also, we have lumber storage over here. Um, this is our primary lumber storage for the city for any sort of structural collapse. Uh, most often, what we go to are the, the cars in the houses, cars in the buildings type situation. We go to those fa fairly often, actually, uh, because we are citywide. So anywhere in the city or neighboring small cities that don't have a lumber cache, they're going to call us and we're going to go out there and we'll do some shoring. We will occasionally do it after fires as well. If we know some occupants need to get back in there and get personal belongings um, or some in an apartment complex where one side is uninhabitable but the other side may be, we can go in there and do some shoring and get it to where they can get inside and get some stuff out or still live on half the building and the other half of the building will find a new place for them. To That's awesome. Right. So a lot of effort was put into this building as far as architecture. And these are some of the things you'll never see from downstairs. Uh, and when they built that, they knew that. They knew you'd never be able to see this stonework from the ground. The only way you're gonna see is if you come up to the upper roof. Uh, you get a better view of the tower here, uh, our signature red roof. Uh, and a lot of really cool stonework here. So if you've ever been to a boxing gym, this one is quite unique in the fact that it's fully adjustable and it's really stout. Uh, this is it's dated up top, 19 teens. Uh, so this is original to the fire station when we did boxing upstairs. Wow. So here, this door leads us back into the truck bay and our fallout shelter basement is here. Um, of course, it doesn't get used as a true fallout shelter in the way that it once did, uh, but we are, in kind of a tornado alley here being in Texas. So it's not unheard of for the, if the bad weather's coming through downtown or a tornado coming through downtown like it did back in the late 90s, early 2000s that went straight through downtown. Uh, this is where we all kind of ride out the storm. Okay. Once the storm passes, we're back up and we're out on the streets. All right. Also down here, we have a tunnel that goes all the way over into the building I showed you earlier, where is our bomb and arson division is his house huh. um so other than utilities today what we use that for is confined space training oh we're the primary confined space team for the city of fort worth um so if we ever do some training scenarios that's a great real world prop that we have i didn't hear what it was but i might jump on with them yep, i ahead. can take we'll that mic later. mic back from you yeah they're going to the homeless corridor oh, okay So we can go ahead and go upstairs. Uh, all the business happens down here really and all the relaxation and fun stuff happens upstairs, uh, except in the chief's office. You can <laughs> call down there, it's not always the funnest time. The staircase is incredible. Yeah, it's a really cool staircase. And as you stand here and look, you can see the wear marks. Uh, you can see the dips in the tile from the years and years of steps have gone, or years and years of feet that have gone up these stairs. Yeah. So it's, 
It's, uh, we, take, we take some pride in this stuff, yeah. We really like it. So up here you have our main hallway. Uh, down this, dish, this direction is a chief's office and bedroom, and that door at the end leads back onto the lower roof that we were at, right there by where the ladder goes up to the upper roof. Uh, going down this direction, you have, at the very end, you have the station captain. And right there, you have the engine lieutenant. And right here is a common work area with some computers to where you need to do some reports, CEs, whatever you need to take care of is right in there. Okay? Nice. Uh, this direction will be our dorm. So this is sleep, recreation, and lockers. Uh, restrooms and things are over on that end. Uh, all of our slide poles are behind doors. Uh, one safety, two air conditioning. Yeah. Air conditioning being the big one. And uh, I noticed those doors are labeled. So that correlates yes. to where the pole comes down. That's right. So for the most part it does. Uh, so if you're riding a squad, this will be your pull of slide down unless like in my situation, I'm driving, so I'm on the other side. So I would ride the truck pull. Okay. But either way, yeah, a squad, ladder, engine, those are the pulls there. Nice. Uh, Behind these doors over here is our gymnasium. Right now, I think it's team building physical fitness with pickleball. Uh, we can take a look and see what they got going on. So right here, you can see we have the basketball. That's awesome. Yep. Uh, so on the one side, you can see we have a basketball court. Yeah. Uh, we can also do the pickleball, obviously. We also have a volleyball net and our hooks in the floor where we can secure the volleyball net. Uh, on this side, we play three wall racquetball. Okay. Uh, so it's kind of a modified racquetball, but we have the three wall on this side. We can do the racquetball on, or of course, half court basketball. That's awesome. So, yeah. Yeah, it's great yeah. for team building and uh, rivalries between stations sometimes. So it's, sure. it's, it's good for that. <laughs> uh, washer dryer back there. Recent renovation, this has just been completed here. Now we have separate women, men, female, or female, male restrooms upstairs. Okay. Previously, we did not have that. That uh, was completed this month. Okay. So that's brand new to us there. Uh, recreation here, and this will be our kitchen. Brad's in here making us dinner. And uh, two tables, playing room for everybody. And just to help you be oriented, Right there where our refrigerators are at, that's the tall tower that we were looking at outside. Okay. And then for secondary egress, we have right here, this is our porch. Goes oh. out to the roof we were at. Nice. I really like the information board here. Just a little bit yeah, of everything. That's relatively new, but it rotates through. Very cool. Did we miss anything? Cover everything? I don't think so. I don't think so either. Cool. We missed Brad, but we can't let him talk to the public. He was begging me earlier to be on video. <laughs> He's going to throw, throw that water at you. Yeah. How did you go, dude? Truck two, go ahead. 
Yes, sir. I'm talking to the property rep. She said it's uh, construction dust. We're going to go up and just take a look at it real quick. You can hold whoever you want at your discretion. The truck is clear. Lauren, you copy that. We're going to hold it to one. Long clear, hold it to one. Dax, we're in the bay at station two, and you were telling me about some old call logs that you know of in the firehouse. Tell me about those and where they're kept. Yeah, so I'm newer here, but you know, the old guys, you know, when I got here, they wanted to share all of their, the history and, and the tradition and everything. And so one, there's a, tons of different rooms and little hidey holes and stuff in the station since it's like the second oldest station um, in the city. And it's been around for about a hundred years. Yeah. Um, kept up 24 seven. So. They've, they've kept a lot of their history with this place that's kind of unique to this to this building. Um, that's really old 1930s. So yeah. Um, so there's an attic in here that we can. And they've kept a bunch of stuff and want to share with you. Yeah, the call logs. There's uh, purchase records, call logs, um, blueprints to the city a long time ago. Um, that was pretty fun to look for. I wouldn't have known that it was here, but they showed me all this stuff. And, that's real cool. That is awesome. I've never, never seen this in a firehouse before. So this is the biggest one. This is 1959 recorded. <laughs> and they just kept these massive. Some stations still even keep the tradition up to this day. We've got a couple around the city that still do. Um, so it's just... Um, out on arrival, origin, yeah, I mean, there's just November 1959, District 1, all this, all this cool stuff. So wow. Got a fire record there, got blueprints, old blueprints, I don't even know how old these are. Old um, maps of the city? Old maps. Bunch of history up here that's, I would, no one would ever know it's up here except for the guys passing down the the tradition and um, hopefully it doesn't get forgotten up here. We keep it alive and stuff like right. that. Right. Yeah. That is awesome. Five pills. No rebounds, general rule in effect. Huh? Three in one hole, you get to pick somebody to automatically be in. Long, as long as if, if you throw the pill and it goes in the kitchen, you're automatically in. Oh. With oh. Jano. <laughs> and Jano. And uh, one redemption throw for everybody. Unless it goes to the kitchen. The, the guy that throws it in the kitchen, he's automatically in, but he gets one redemption throw. Mm. Oh, no. Oh! 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 Oh, 
Oh! Oh! Ooh. Is he talking to your back swing? Mm -hmm. All right. Jenny. Hey, by himself. Come on, Jeno. You know uh, what to do. You know exactly. Yeah. If you <laughs> land this. <laughs> oh! No! Oh! <laughs> Hey, we do have we do have an off shifter on this ship right now. Yeah, you, two of you, me. Uh, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? That's the point. Uh, <laughs> Thanks for playing. Your first day is Saturday. Oh! Chief in the pan. You always put the chief in the pan. Always. Yeah. 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 If, you get, if you get three pills, you're going to hit somebody in the end. <laughs> uh, yeah. 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 Engine eight. Engine two. Check eight. The Zion two. The span of channel three. Other alarm high rise. 1-3. Uh, it appears to be clear at this time. For security, we're going to go check it out, and it's unoccupied. Command clear. Alarm is 1-3. Unoccupied. You can hold engine truck. Command clear. Alarm did you copy direct. We're going to hold engine truck. Alarm is it. It's just about 9.30 at night and I am getting ready to bed down. I've got this great bunk room all to myself. It's got a half bath attached and this is in an area back behind the apparatus floor where the squad company has their bedrooms. Uh, there's office spaces that have been converted over and so there's five rooms total back here. So I've got my own place. I don't have to be up on the second floor of the firehouse and have to take the poles tonight, which is uh, kind of nice. So great, it's nice and cool back here. It's been a pretty steady day and I'm interested to see what the night will bring. Good morning from Station 2. 
got a little bit of sleep last night. Overall, this firehouse had 13 calls yesterday, so it was a, a pretty steady day. And I'm off to start my second day with Fort Worth Fire, and I will see you in that video.